I'm Ellis Martin, and this is Money Talk Radio. Join me now for a conversation with Chris Showalter, the CEO of LifeZone Metals, trading on the New York Stock Exchange as LZM. LifeZone, the supply chain solution for clean metals. LifeZone Metals is a modern metals company with the aim of creating value across the battery metal supply chain of extraction, processing, and recycling. Using its HydroMet technology, the company's products will responsibly and cost-effectively provide supply chain solutions to the global battery metals market. LifeZone's Kabanga Nickel project in Tanzania is believed to be one of the world's largest and highest grade undeveloped nickel sulfide deposits. By pairing with their HydroMet technology, they are working to unlock a new source of LME grade nickel, copper, and cobalt for the global battery metals markets and empower Tanzania to achieve full in-country value creation and become the next premier source of class one nickel. A definitive feasibility study for the project is due for completion by Q3 2024. Through LifeZone's US-based platinum, palladium, and Rhodium Recycling Joint Venture, the company is working to demonstrate that their HydroMet technology can process and recover platinum group metals from responsibly sourced spent automotive catalytic converters in a cleaner and more efficient way than conventional smelting and refining methods. Chris, welcome back to the program. Thanks for visiting with us again today. Thanks, Alice. Thanks again for having me back. Appreciate it. Let's review the Kabanga Nickel Project in Tanzania with nickel, copper, and cobalt. The Kabanga Nickel Project, this is our flagship project, and this is something that we've been you know, very focused on. We've got key strategic partners as well with us in this project, BHP, and we've recently made announcements that we've been bringing in they're very meaningful stakeholders into the project, one being the U.S. Development Finance Corporation, who we brought in and engaged with to look at project finance for the Kabanga project. Um, that's quite meaningful. That's something that we're working jointly with BHP on that really will enhance, in our view, the economics bringing in project financing for the overall project. So, so very exciting. And that really establishes the nexus with the U.S. government and something that we've been working very closely with the U.S.'s policy shift to really engage with number of countries in Africa, this is one of the ways that they've demonstrated they're coming in and supporting some of the critical supply chain of these battery metals. And I think the other important update you've seen is with President Biden's visit to Angola recently, the Kabanga project was highlighted in the White House briefing as one of the projects that was identified as something that is being supported by the U.S. government. So that was great for us. We were actually supposed to be part of that trip. We weren't able to attend due to a heavy snowfall in a certain part of the U.S. that prevented me from attending, but it really exhilarating for us to be able to be in that category of that visit with President Biden and really demonstrating that this is a key supportive project by the U.S. Development Finance Corporation. Most of us had no idea in the U.S. part of the discussion there in Angola. That wasn't the news that was pervaded, but it was, in fact, involving critical minerals and critical metals. So you have positioned yourself to withstand a change in U.S. policy, haven't you? I think when you look at the key relationships we have with the U.S. government is we're really supported by the Development Finance Corporation, which is there to support initiatives in emerging markets that are conducive to U.S. policy initiatives. And we very much check that box be a critical minerals project producing nickel, not the coke malt, and all of which are on the critical minerals list. And also, I think the infrastructure support that the U.S. is looking to facilitate through the Partnership for Global Infrastructure Initiative, the PGI, and we're also very correlated to that initiative because the big libido rail corridor that's being supported within the sub-Saharan Africa, that installed infrastructure is there to unlock support and ensure that additional sources of battery metals are being procured for the PGI supported countries, which is really the G7 countries, in addition to some others. So everything around the Kabanga project has been compatible with all these policy initiatives within the U.S. government, but primarily supported through state, the U.S. Development Finance Corporation, and then also be a priority project within the context of the Mineral Security Partnership, which is another organization created by the U.S. to work with like-minded partners and countries around the world to facilitate secure supply chains of battery metals. You've had a significant resource increase since we last spoke. This is part of us trying to get some of the information regarding some of the recent work we've done correlated to the DFS. What we just announced our list is about a 21% increase in the contained nickel in the two categories of measured and indicated, and that's specifically in the North. And that is the preeminent largest ore body within the Kabanga deposit. So that's very exciting. And there's some really nice pieces in there. There's about 3.3 million attributable tons added to measured and indicated over three 
3% nickel. So some really nice high grade material. It's enhancing our mineral resource statement. And this is another example of just how phenomenal the war body is, that it's a gift that keeps giving. So this has led us to having increased in confidence of over 81% of the mineral resource total. So the full tonnage is now in that higher confidence category of measured in the indicators. And in our view, that's rare. That's it's really spectacular for us to have that level of confidence in the ore body and just shows the amount of work that's been done, how well understood this ore body is, and really what a high quality potential for this project. I would say your company as of late, and I'm talking about the last few days, has responded on the market in a very positive fashion compared to other companies in the space that have really suffered in the market. I would have to think it's because of your team. It's because of the relationships across the globe that you've just outlined and really the resource and the location. And see, definitely, I say the, the partnership model with BHP and also the government of Tanzania, having the government of Tanzania as an equity partner of the project that changes the whole dynamic of engagement as they do themselves now as a shareholder. So they're much more supportive when it comes to progressing a project. So that's a big factor. And I think to bring in the U.S. government, as we just mentioned, as a stakeholder in a project, part of the U.S. Development Finance Corporation engagement, we have also announced that we have an MOU in place with JOGMEC, which is a state body in the Japanese government there to facilitate Japanese companies facilitating inputs into Japan. JOGMEC has played a critical role facilitating a number of large investments globally to support the Japanese economy. And what they've been able to do for us is come in and play a facilitating role as one of the members of the Mineral Security Partnership. And this is related to our offtake that LifeSo has. We control 40% of the offtake. And so JOGMEC is working with us to identify and bring in a strategic Japanese partner, which is really their mandate is to facilitate and coordinate and co-invest with Japanese strategics into projects like the Kabamian Nickel Project. This is especially important now since we see that China is pretty much turning the screws or beginning to limit the export of critical minerals. I think very timely. I think the some of the more aggressive policies being announced globally, it really puts Kabanga in a very strong position to be supported by the Western governments. As we indicated, we have been by both the U.S. announcements and the announcements with the MOU with Jogmec. And I think the ability for Kabanga to provide not only clean nickel, copper, cobalt coming from Tanzania, but to really be an alternative source versus Indonesia, Russia, or any of the other supply chains that are becoming increasingly more complicated, especially as you have the more aggressive policies starting to permeate throughout this recent kind of macro return. What can we see for LifeZone in 2025? 2025 is going to be very busy for us. Really, we're going to be kicking into a number of development priorities for the project. Really, what we want to focus on in this next stage immediately is the relocation and the housing project, getting some of the pre-development work underway, and then working with our partners to focus on the DFS and everything everything related there. So really, it's going to be a very busy 2025 on the Cabanga project, but also we're going to be excited to make further announcements on our AutoCAP project in North America, where we have a partnership with Glencore. So I think 2025 is going to see material advancements on both these key flagship projects for us. But the AutoCats in the U.S. is something that has been, I think, blanketed by the size of Cabanga, but this is equally as exciting for us. And I think we're about to identify a niche where we can really demonstrate some of our hydromet expertise in a recycling market that is really exciting for us, just given where it is in the cycle and where PGMs are overall. I think it's a great time for us to be getting into the market and the way we're looking at a more consolidated, vertically integrated project scope. This is something we're very keen to move forward pretty aggressively with our partners at Glencore. Recycling has always been a part of base metal production, critical metal production, Actually, all mining, hasn't it? If you look at some of the comments recently by even Elon Musk coming into the new administration, he's already made comments that recycling is going to be a very big factor when it comes to empowering U.S. domestic critical metals production. And the U.S. will be limited in terms of what they're endowed with regarding the actual respective metals on the U.S.'s own sovereign territory. And recycling is going to play an increasingly large role. I think you've seen Elon Musk latch on to that. And in our own way, at Partnership at Glencore, we've identified a, a competitive niche that we think we can come in. And really, the, the opportunity of either progressing to build a large platinum mine in South Africa or focusing on above ground mining, as they say, in North America, where we can domestically process, refine, and deliver platinum palladium rhodium domestically here in the U.S. It's a very great alternative for us. And I think the ability to do that in a way that is an alternative to the traditional smelting area, where you're going to have a much larger CO2 footprint, and to do that in a clean fashion here in the U.S. is something that's going to be even more attractive for investors to see once we demonstrate our capability. Certainly. 
as of this date, and I drive a, a Tesla Model S, these cars, while producing zero emissions, the road to produce them hasn't been necessarily carbon-free, has it? There's so many aspects of where you count certain efficiencies. And I think if you want to extend from scope one all the way to scope three, if you want to talk about the CO2 implication at the gas station where you're getting the, the chargers established, I mean, where the metals come from, I mean, there's so many aspects. And I think the amount of additional electricity in the grid system is going to be something that is a huge hurdle for the U.S. infrastructure to tackle. But for us, very simply, what do we know that we can deliver? We can deliver cleaner processed critical metals in both our Cabanga project and the AutoCAP project here in North America. And these are going to be the first two areas we demonstrate our capability as a company to provide clean processing solutions to the industry and to the market. And I think that's you know, two of the first projects. And we have a pipeline of very exciting additional projects we would love to tackle in the coming year. Chris, I look forward to chatting with you again in the coming year to discuss these projects in further detail. Thanks so much for catching up with me today on the program. I've been speaking with Chris Showalter, the CEO of Life Zone Metals, trading on the New York Stock Exchange as LZM. Learn more about the company by visiting their website, lifezonemetals.com. For Money Talk Radio, I'm Ellis Martin.